the second section introduces us to the protagonists. Um, so we started out with Sarah Ann Hardin. She was granted the land claim in, in Texas. And then I asked our archivist, well, who else traveled through Texas? And um, I made a trip to the Botanical Research Institute of Texas, which is right across the street from the Carter, and discovered Charles Wright. So Charles Wright is really Texas's first botanist. Um, he travels for Asa Gray uh, at Harvard, and he's sending black back plant specimens to Asa Gray. Um, and he discovers more than 3,000 plant species. And he does so by mostly walking from San Antonio to El Paso. That's like 640 miles. And originally I thought, wow, that's so romantic that he walked. And the truth of the matter was he had no supplies, no guarantee of income. Um, he was hungry most of the time. And this governmental survey didn't really want to allow him on the wagon. So everything that he achieved, he achieved through like pretty miserable circumstances. Unlike uh, John James Audubon, who you know for as a uh, um, scientist of birds, um, he was already famous when he came to Texas. So he gets to have a cup of grog with Sam Houston and he gets to experience a Texas that was really wonderful to him. And uh, he decided that he was an honorary Texan. So he appointed himself honorary Texan. And then uh, the last addition to our um, group of 19th century travelers was Frederick Hall Olmsted. You may know him as the designer of Central Park, but in fact, um, before that, he was a travel writer whose brother had consumption. So he decided um, what's better for illness than to travel through Texas by muleback for a couple of months. Um, so they, um, even though they had every advantage, they had feather beds, they had coffee at their disposal. Uh, Frederick Olmsted really has an Eastern uh, perspective on Texas. And um, he's, un he's uncomfortable in the feather beds. He doesn't really like the taste of the coffee. So he's kind of um, one of the protagonists that we think had a somewhat pejorative view of Texas. And then I'm showing you Mark Dion. So Mark is the final protagonist. Uh, these portraits are by Nancy Genuzzi, who uh, works for the Wall Street Journal. And uh, Mark, uh, so we sent on four journeys through Texas in the footsteps of these explorers. And what did we hope that he would find? Um, I think we hoped that he would have much more of an open mind than Frederick Law Olmsted. He would have much less calamity than Charles Wright. And other than the fact that I sent him to uh, West Texas with botanists in the middle of July, I think um, his, his travels weren't particularly perilous. But what does he do? He's a sculptor who brings back um, objects from his travels as a kind of sculptural travel narrative. So we're used to Pee Wee's Big Adventure or On the Road or Borat, um, all of these ways of documenting the road trip, a really American phenomenon. Um, how do you document a road trip when you're a sculptor? Well, one way is through your journals, um, and another way is through the objects that you bring back. One of the ways that Mark is really not a scientist is that he's bringing back objects for artistic purposes. So you will see a giant cabinet in this exhibition that includes everything from specimens of dirt that have numbers that refer to nothing, to the shampoo from his hotel room, to bones, to his fingernail clippings, to Fruit Loops. So it's actually a kind of, what do we privilege? What objects do we privilege and what objects do we leave behind? And it's Mark's view of Texas in sculptural form. Um, in that room, you also have custom designed wallpaper that he associates with Texas, so trying not to be stereotypical. But there are, there are some things that you'll recognize like an armadillo and mosquitoes. All the 19th century travelers remarked about how bad the mosquitoes were in Texas at the time. Um, so Mark is paying homage to them. Um, so you see a baby carriage full of bones, a case full of vials, and a cup that is the target practice from King Ranch, where Mark traveled, as well as historical maps from our collection, and a series of lithographs of um, artist explorers' tools, as well as a, a tarp piece that shows the tools of the trade. So throughout the exhibition, you're going to see um, 19th century paints, what was the artist tool um, in the 19th century, uh, the glass plate negative, which is the photographer's tool in the 19th century, and then Mark's tools as a traveler explorer in the 21st century, including the slide carousels that he um, took along with him so that he could give lectures to pay for his early trips. So it's really um, meant to be a nuanced view of Texas. It's Mark's own perspective of what we pick up and what we leave behind. What will people think of matchbooks 
um, long after people have stopped smoking, hopefully. Um, so it's, it's an account of a period of time in Texas with a scientific flair, but really um, not meant to be a scientific investigation, nor is it a literal recreation of what these explorers um, in the 19th century would have encountered. That's, of course, impossible. Some of the places that Charles Wright visited um, are now parking lots in between a Walmart and a McDonald's. So really this, this investigation is poking fun, but it's poking fun as well as paying homage. And part of the way that we got Mark to understand Texas is through hooking him up with many, many um, Texans who served as his guides. Mark doesn't drive. Um, so you will see the influence of the filmmakers, Eric Clapp, um, a tarot card reader, a couple who um, introduced Mark to their own small museum, uh, Matt Clayberg, who is an artist and a rancher. All of these folks who hosted Mark played a role in how he viewed Texas. 